Well, we're off to a lively start for accordion music there from James Kelleher and accompanied on the bow round by Regina Lynch. When, when did the, the, um, the Horgan brothers, Jerry and Dennis, is it? Johnny. Johnny and yeah. Denny. Uh, Jerry and Johnny. Sorry. Um, they, they were playing from a very early age, they were playing from 19, 1950 and uh, at local level and um, they, they, they competed at county level and uh, from the, the late 50s they, they were into inter county level and uh, constantly with horses and you know while they developed into tractors uh, was, was developing elsewhere they still continued and persisted with horses right through you know until their death. And when did they die? Uh, Johnny died in 1973, and uh, Jerry died in 1989. Mm. And these two men were, 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 were uh, they stood out because of their prowess in the plowing field? Well, they did. Uh, that was, was, was more important than still. Uh, it, was, it was always shattered by the fact that there were two great characters. Wherever they went, they, they took a, they, they, they always brought in, you know, they always attracted the greatest crowd at a, at a play match, always. Let me talk to Jerry Nealis O'Connor. Jerry, um, what were they like, these two lads? You know him well, I presume? Well, I know him well, uh, because I went to school with him. And, uh, and I was then the oldest uh, man here in this class tonight. And I went to school with uh, Johnny, who was the oldest, and Jerry, and Mikey. Mikey was my class going to school. And uh, that, uh, that was the only three more did. But uh, they were great characters. They were great characters altogether. You know, outside plowing, you know, like. What know, kind of things would they get up to now that gave them the reputation of being great characters? They were great characters uh, in the line of uh, neighbours. And, uh, of course, uh, they were uh, drinkers as well, like. We, 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 and uh, that made them better. Because, uh, uh, Jolly, he wished to say, uh, when they was winning their plowing match, they would spend every penny of their money because he said uh, we were decent. And uh, well, uh, there was one time, I remember, they had no money going to this plowing match. And uh, they got uh, the price of a hundred awards from Bridgie Redden, Van Magree. A hundred awards? A hundred awards, Johnny uh -huh. said. Yeah. And it only amounted to six bob. And he said oh, even the hundred to bit a hundred wasn't there, he said, which he didn't know, which he because he didn't wait it out. But uh, anyway he said I wouldn't have thrown that. And of course they landed to her that evening, late at night, and after her didn't they land to another man that was between the two pubs per head. So I'd better known as the Gumboil bar and they put old pa out of the bed. And he had to get up that old of the night, <coughs> and Mary, a lot of mercy, and Mary Boyle, she got up as well. And they entertained him there till daybreak in the morning, it was. Well, do you know, they were great characters. Because, you see, they used to spend every penny of the money they was to get at the playing match, whatever, they, they were always winning. And the crowd who was going with them would be looking forward to their winnings because, you see, they would come out just as good as what they were going with. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole, the whole, the plowing championship and the, the matches, were they uh, very popular? People travelled and followed yeah, their They, their they had a certain crowd. There was, there was a certain crowd that always travelled with them. Like Bill Connor. And um, uh, Connie Bryan, and all them, and of course Carmen, and they would all come out very well. You see, they were sure to win. Right. And they would say that Jerry could have a little our, our, our islands won if he was in time, or only for the, uh, too, uh, too much of the drink. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to delay him getting to the match. They delayed him, it delayed him, you see, they were at a disadvantage. With uh, all this drink, you see, and Jolly was so well able for the plow, there was nobody to compete with him. Mm. 
would you explain now for somebody who may not be too sure about the details of this, what are the criteria for, the, you know, that the, what would the judges be looking for in, 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 in a good plowman? Well, uh, no. Straight line, it's fairly obvious. Uh, I mean the opening and the, 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 the closing of the, of, the, of, the, of the plot. The straight line would be very important to us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, well, uh, Jolly was the, the principal, he, he was the real plowman. He was the winner. He was the, but Johnny, the brother, they like cooperated to see him as a team. And uh, Johnny should get as much credit as uh, Johnny because he was a great man after the horses. He was a wonderful man to end the reins. And even though I know he had a, a pair of horses, they do everything for him. But uh, when he go to this, um, you know, they wouldn't, he wouldn't have his own horses uh, when he go out maybe to carry a different parts of the country. He'd be uh, presented with a pair of horses. But he talked to them horses, and he'd tell them, he'd t as if they understood, <coughs> he'd tell them about the horses he had at home. And he'd tell them, he, and he'd rub them down, and he'd talk to them, and he'd say, he'd expect the same from that pair of horses as his own pair of horses at home. <laughs> and, do you know, he was very good. The, he'd, he'd, he'd talk to the horses there, and he'd cool them down to see if they were excited or anything, you know. And they'd get going. They were wonderful. <laughs> the, you know, he'd get them going. They, everyone would be surprised the way he'd talk to the horses and the way he'd cool them down. And they'd work for him there. Uh, he, uh, Jolly'd be on the floor, he'd be on the reins. He was the most wonderful man there was ever known in Bandagree. Now, you did a fair share of plowing yourself, I suppose, did you? Well, I, I had done a bit of plowing. Well, you know, I used to do a bit of plowing with one horse. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, a bit of gardening and all that like. But uh, I, I mean, uh, they were always going out. Well, my brother can always go with him. And they would be, um, would, would they be hired out by a lot of farmers to do it? But well, most farmers would do their own plowing. Oh, well, they? they would do their own plowing. But uh, the horses, they would take tillage. Right. To say, Johnny, we're over. They, he'd take tillage, maybe a... Maybe uh, <coughs> within a few miles of, of uh, Mukrukum, mm. at a place called uh, uh, Nady Dinahoo's farm. He, had, he was all out about Nady Dinahoo. And um, he'd um, plow maybe five or six acres with horses. And every side of that plowing would be just straight as if we put a line to it. Mm. But then, of course, he'd have a novel job saving to see the carbon, for the oats he was always set. He did, may, if, the, if, the, if the harvest was anyway slow and bad, you see, he'd have an awful job, you see, he'd have to get, we were still helping. But um, there was one man now in Barn Moor, and Johnny was always in Dreden. You see, it didn't that he was in Dreden, but he was fine for, you see, with the Lord of Carbon that would be filled. You understand? If it wouldn't be fully filled right, or if it fell out, Johnny would say, we'll have to watch that boy, he was done for it. Because, you see, every man from down the great belly would, they would hear about it before the week would be out. If I got fell out in the road. <laughs> but uh, he got, he, I would be with him, and we was, he got me to fill the loads the same day. There was the nicest load you ever see filled. When we were passing Barnmore, Dan uh, White, he was the fireman at the Barnmore Creamery at the time, and he was there. He'd be there maybe till four or five o'clock. He came out to the gate, and um, because Johnny was prepared for him, we had the loads filled very nice. And Johnny <coughs> um, said, um, Dan looked around at the loads, <coughs> and he said like that, uh, well, uh, uh, Johnny said to him, what do you think of him, Dan? I don't know, so see, they're well filled, he said. But you know, Johnny says, see, if we put one load up in the other, would you have a decent load? <laughs> 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 well, you know, but it says, but Johnny went up with his head. <laughs> we never heard the scolding up the road. And he said to me, well, you know, he said, Dan, I don't like anybody from Bamboo up. <laughs>